Thanks for joining us, and welcome back to the Watchman on the Wall podcast. Periodically, we'll bring you true stories of angelic encounters, heavenly visitations, near-death experiences, as well as modern-day prophecies that are relevant to us today. When we come back, we'll begin our next episode. Hello and welcome back. We all know about what's going on in Washington, D.C. these days and around the Capitol with all the fencing and the National Guard and and all of that. Well, this week, we're going to hear from Timothy Dixon, who is a pastor who receives prophetic dreams from God. He has recently had two dreams concerning Washington, D.C., and I think they're quite interesting. He says there's a big shaking and a big storm coming to Washington, and it's coming soon. So without further ado, here's Pastor Timothy Dixon. Praise the Lord. My name is Timothy Dixon. I am a minister, a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am also an over-the-road truck driver. Uh, A lot of the minister friends I have uh, has encouraged me to record this dream I've had about four nights ago. Uh, All through my years, for, for quite a while, of serving the Lord I've had a number of dreams and God speaks to me that way I had a dream that I saw the Capitol building and the steps that went down was real long had a patio leading out to the steps back to the Capitol and like two pinnacles on each side of the steps. Out of the doors of the Capitol came a lion. And this lion, it run out across the patio. And When it did, it, it, it run out on top of one of the pinnacles and it stood and throwed its chest up and raised its head and it looked so, so ma- majestical and so, so noble. And it, 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 it roared with a real loud roar. And I seen from the, up to, from the front, like, like and they, they were seven men that come out and started walking down the patio through the, across the patio to, towards the steps. These men looked like some kind of, of rabbi or priest from, but I knew that these seven men, that they were from the tribe of Judah, of Israel. And each one of them had a chauffeur a ram's horn. And as they walked out, that lion was standing on that pinnacle and they had roared. They they walked out and each one, they separated themselves like maybe eight, nine foot, something like that apart. But I knew for some reason that they were exact. If you took a tape measure, they was exactly the same distance apart, seven sprawled out. And one by one, they blew their horns until all had blowed the seven horns. And when 
that I looked out and in the front was a crowd of people that looked just like a sea, just as far back as you could look towards the George Washington, the Washington Monument. You could just look back just as far as you could see and there was people. It just, it looked like just, I don't know how to number the people, but there were so many way beyond, just as far as you could see down to where that, that pool is, even just way back, just as far as your eyes could behold. And I seen the Washington Monument and there was a door in the bottom of it. And out of that door, it opened up and swung to the outside and out of that door came President Trump. And when he did, he walked up through the crowd of the people and the people just went crazy. They, they started lifting up their hands and praising and magnifying God. And, and you could hear them, all of them was saying, Lord, I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for four more years. And as he walked on up towards the front, towards the steps, there was a man come out from up around the Capitol, like like he was hid from from people. You couldn't you couldn't you couldn't see him. But when he when he come out, he he like he manifested himself, and he had a staff in his hand, and he walked out with the staff. And them seven other uh, priests, rabbis from Judah, they screamed with a loud voice. The seven did. And the man with the staff didn't say, but the seven said that the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. Then the man with the staff, they were standing at the bottom. They gave a white mule to President Trump. And they were standing there. And all of a sudden, a great storm, like a, like a hurricane, it blew up. And it started just so violent. And out of the hurricane came a whirlwind. And that whirlwind, it come down and sat down on top of the, the patio and it started spinning. Out of the whirlwind came a man. That man walked down to the front and he had a horn of oil in his hand. And he anointed President Trump over his head and poured it on top of his head and, and, and said, the man with the staff and the man that come out of the whirlwind told President Trump, said, I anoint you king. I anoint you president of the United States. Four more years. After that, I looked to the right and there was like an alley over to my right. And I looked and there was two donkeys with two people sitting on the donkeys. One was a woman and one was a man. And the man with the staff, he jabbed his staff down on the ground, on the bottom step, just jabbed it on the ground. And when he did that, the man that come out of the whirlwind went back up inside the whirlwind. And over to my right, the two donkeys died right there in the streets. And the man that was sitting on the donkey he grabbed his chest and he passed away, fell dead with a heart attack. The woman run inside the Capitol building. She had daggers, like, like some kind of throw knives that was hidden. You couldn't see them. Nobody in the public, you, you, she had like a purple dress on. And she ran out and started running in. When she got inside the Capitol, the Senate and the House and the 
the Congress, all the politicians. She was pulling those daggers out from behind her back and just throwing them, just throwing them and throwing them and throwing them and throwing them. And then she had one, she walked up to Nancy Pelosi and Nancy was standing at that little desk and her hand and the woman jabbed it down in her hand to the, to the podium. And when she done that, that tornado that had the man, it blew inside the doors and come inside the Capitol. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And when it blowed inside the Capitol, it was such a chaotic pressure. It, it's like one of these news videos you see where a tornado has hit a, hit a residential area and just tore it all to pieces. That's how the inside looked. The storm, after it blowed inside, it left back out the doors and it moved on through, through the land. It was just traveling like a tornado does, but it blowed on out through the land. And the man with the staff started walking, walking out through the land. He was on foot. I went back inside the Capitol and nobody, man, there was so many people that was gone. Nancy, she wasn't, she wasn't there no more. Schumer, so many other people, they weren't there, they were gone. And then I looked around and I was, I was amazed because there was a, there was a, a group. I don't know how many, but there was a number, a, a, a little smaller number of people that their ties wasn't even messed up. Their hair was not blowed one piece out of place. They were kept through this storm. And the two men had said, uh, actually before the two men had said before they went, before the man stabbed his staff on the ground and and the uh, other man was caught up in the whirlwind, they both had said at, at, at that point said to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord that God is fixing to work wonders and then all this started taking place and and it just it just it was so so powerful that when I woke up I was sick in my stomach I, uh, weak just sick just plumb shook at what I'd saw I pray that this finds you to be a blessing to you. You can interpret it as you will. I believe God has his eyes on the devil. Satan will not have this country. Not now. God's going to move. It's going to be a great biblical power a power of God that no one can stop. Are you interested in scary places? Well, I found a great podcast called Your Haunted Holiday. Each week, sisters Lisa and Lindsay will take you to some of the most haunted places in the world. Their incredible research into how these places became haunted is complemented by their insight into the ghostly activities that are present. They give you information on ghost tours, prices, and much more. That's Your Haunted Holiday. You can go to yourhauntedholiday.com or just listen to wherever great podcasts are found. Hello again, this is The Watchman. Please join us each week for an exciting and inspirational podcast dealing with angel encounters, heavenly visitations, 
near-death experiences, as well as modern-day prophecies that are relevant to us today. So tune in each week and share it with your friends. After all, they could use a little inspiration in their life, too. That's the Watchman on the Wall podcast, and now you can find us on YouTube. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Brother Timothy Dixon coming to you today from my home. I have a word from the Lord. The Lord visited me last night and spoke to me. Something that I feel is very encouraging. You know, he told Noah he said, my spirit will not always strive with man. He told Noah to go out and build an ark and at that point it didn't rain out of the heavens and people thought that he had lost his mind. over 120 years Noah built a big ship to float on water to the time come one day that God the Bible said God shut the door and it started raining then everything that that man said up to that point oh it was so so remembered then God has given everyone a chance across this nation. And once again, God's revival power is going to ring across the world and give everyone a chance to repent and pray. But the Lord told me last night to tell the people, tell America, Tell them that thus saith the Lord of heaven. That the whirlwind. That was in my dreams. If you go back and look at the dream about the whirlwind. And the man with the staff on the. And the seven. Rabbis on the. Porch and the. The woman in purple dress and the donkeys dies and the, if you go back and look at that, it talks about a whirlwind hitting hitting that capital and, and there was nothing left inside the capital. The people were gone. The Lord told me to tell you that in thirty days in thirty days, within the thirty day period here. God is fixing to shake the leaders of this country. God is going to shake the leaders of the foreign countries that's come against the, the very liberty of the name of Jesus. You're not fighting against preachers you've you, you've made fun of the prophets and you've you've laughed to scorn people and you look at people like me and you think it's some gimmick he's he's out for money or he's he's out to build him I'm not out for money I don't ask for money I'm out to deliver a word to this nation I'm out to try to snatch someone from hell before it's too late. God is going to put President Donald Trump back inside that office. There's an angel of death that's going to strike. I know one of the leaders that's way up there, the leader way up there, who passed with a heart attack. God's coming. 
you know, you, you, we, we, we look and we, so many preachers out there have said, well, God's grace is, is, is beyond all this that you're talking now. Why did Ananias and Sapphire die? Why'd they die in the New Testament? Ananias died at Peter's hand, Peter's word. Sapphire come in and they both agreed about an offering. Peter told her, said the same men that carried your husband out will carry you out also. God's grace is for every man. His mercy is beyond compare. He'll reach out to anyone that'll just reach out to Him. But there comes a time that when you fight God and that you think that your evil is going to overcome, God's going to fight you. And what the Lord has told me, spoke this to me. This was not a dream. And that is why I'm so boldly on this video right now telling you that within 30 days, in the 30 day time fair, God's going to rattle. God's going to rattle the structure of the politics. God's going to visit people. That storm, that whirlwind is coming. It's going to blow up in there. The Lord is fixing to dissolve the people, some of the people, I see it. It's just, you look back at the dream and when the, when the whirlwind went in there, some of the people was snatched out by the whirlwind. And that's what's fixing to come. You're fixing to see the hands of God in a way that you've never seen. This is not about me. It's not about the, the men of God or the prophets or the, the people that is standing this hour. But the word that I speak to you today is the word from the Lord Jesus. It's time for us to stand and fight like we've never fought before. Revival in the greatest sense that we've ever beheld in our eyes is going to shake this globe. God is not going to allow. I've heard the people talk, and different preachers talking about that how that the natural is going on and the Supreme Court is denied and this and that and the other. I don't, I don't look at the power of the Supreme Court, the Lord said that He was going to turn the tables. And that's exactly what He's going to do. In the next few days, the next month, God's going to show His hand. God's going to show His hand. And the beginning, the beginning of a cleansing has begun. We'll see God's hand. I'm here to tell, thus saith the Lord, and what He spoke. Now after them 30 days, I don't know what's liable to happen. But Donald Trump will be the President of the United States again. He will be put back in office. They'll betray Kamala Harris. They'll betray her and she already sees it. And she'll turn on them because they've turned on her. A great chaos and a great storm. It's coming, says the Lord of hosts. God bless you is my prayer. Remember us, remember my wife. Pray for the president. Pray for our country. 
Hallelujah. You know, God can do things that is totally impossible to, to men. He told Gideon that he wanted them to tell them that was fearful and afraid to go home. Well, there was a bunch of them went home that day before he had to go fight against the, the Persian army. And uh, so oh, up in the, the northern army, up through the valley, across the mountains. Then he got there and the Lord told him, he said, there's still too many. Take them down to the river. And the ones that lapse like a dog when they drink water, keep those and send the rest away. They went but 300 that day. And the Lord told Gideon, he said, Lord, why'd you do this? And he said, I've narrowed it down to an impossibility. There's no way that 300 could beat that army to where the, they looked over the top of the hills. And they said there were so many of the, of the Persians and so they, they looked like grasshoppers for the people that was there. And the Lord told Gideon, he said, I don't want them to think that they've done it on their own. That's what God's doing right now. I'm going to stand. This is not something I'm hoping is going to come to pass. This ain't something that I feel like, well, I've got nowhere else to do. I've got to stand now. No, this, I believe this. I believe it wholeheartedly. It's going to come to pass, just as the Lord has spoken. God bless you is my prayers. Are you looking for a good quality used car, but don't want to pay an arm and a leg? Well, come into Rainy Used Cars. We have the largest selection in the Southeast. Whether you want a pickup or a quality SUV from mom, You'll find a variety of vehicles to choose from. We even finance. So come in today. You'll find a rainy used cars located near you. Thanks again for listening, and if you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends. Also, give us a like. We welcome any comments or suggestions you might have. We also ask you to subscribe so that you will be notified of all our future episodes. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time on the Watchman on the Wall podcast. Mm-hmm.